So what is the history of strong print 3D construction? Yeah, my name is John Scott, and I've worked as an engineer for 40 years in research and development, doing uh, plastic, uh, well, using plastic 3D printing for some of the prototypes and things. And when I heard about concrete uh, 3D printing for construction, I thought, this is amazing. This is going to be the future for uh, housing. So I wanted to be involved. So I worked with uh, Twente Additive Manufacturing, uh, co-designing co a printer called the Intrepid. And uh, towards the end of that uh, completion, I met Emmanuel, who's the printmaster. I am. <laughs> so my name is Emmanuel, and I'm the printmaster. I met John like a few years ago, working on a geothermal greenhouse. He was a friend of, his, of John. So we started talking about that, and I was amazed about how we can change the world with this technology, and it's very important to me. And so it's how we start working together on this uh, Intrepid, our printer. Yeah. So tell me more about the company and Intrepid. Well, we're located in southwestern BC, and we have this uh, 3D concrete printer called the Intrepid that will 3D print a footprint about 16 feet by 30 feet, which is around 480 square feet. In metric, this is 9 meters by 5 meters, which is 45 square meters. Um, and here's a picture of the thing set up in this small mode, which is only 6 meters long. It can go up to 10 meters long. And here are some videos of it printing some concrete. And, and by the way, um, additive manuf uh, 3D printing is a little bit of a misnomer. It really should be called additive manufacturing um, and because it's the, it, it, printing implies a flat surface. Yeah. Uh, the maximum height that it prints is, is 12 feet, which is 3.5 meters. So a 1.5-story building can be built using one setup and, um, or, or, of course, with multiple setups, larger buildings can be built. Yeah, and also, like, we decided to have a small printer to be able to do, like, to go to backyard. So it was the idea to have something smaller. But, of course, it can be bigger. We can make one bigger. Yeah, yeah so if, if somebody wants to put a, uh, an office or a studio in their backyard or an, an extra dwelling unit, it's perfect for that because the whole thing can be taken through a, a three-foot-wide gate and set up and, uh, and printed back there. And here's some uh, renderings of a, one or, of a mini home. Um, there's a, a, a rendering of how it looks looking down inside it. And then there's a top view. You can see the gap between the inner and the outer walls where the insulation goes. You can also see the eight uh, structural columns that where the infill concrete and rebar will be placed to give it structural integrity. Um, the view, next view shows it with a mezzanine. It's a partial mezzanine. You can also run it full length. Um, and then the, the, with two setups, you can do something like the deep cove house, uh, which is shown there, or the round house. The, the Intrepid comes with a five-ton box truck plus generator and water totes, so it can be run anywhere. It doesn't need any external supplies. It disassembles into pieces that can be carried by two people through a gate, and it can be set up anywhere, almost anywhere, to do a, to do a small building. We've started designing a new printer called the Producer, which is intended for easy access sites, and it can start printing within an hour of arrival, and it will print a 900-square-foot home, which is 84 square meters. Can you show us something you've printed? Yeah, we recently um, printed the foundation and the walls for a 20-foot by 20 by, by 10-foot farm stand, which is 3 by 6 meters, and there's a picture of it there. And the back view showing the sloped sides, which follow the roof line. This view also shows the pilasters, uh, which are the hollow columns that get the rebar and infill concrete added to create uh, structural integrity. And here's a view with the roof added. Uh, then the next, uh, now the next bit, set of pictures show the construction sequence. The first, this picture here shows the forms being, uh, the, being 3D printed. One thing we can add about the form is like it was on not even ground. So the printer can be readjusted to go on not even ground and we can print almost everywhere with that. Yeah, so we can print on a slope by adjusting the height of the legs. And uh, yeah, um, so the, the next picture shows the, um, the footings where the rebar and infill concrete have been added. You can see the, um, the rebar sticking up, 
ready for the pilasters. Uh, this is set up, by the way, as an 8-meter mode, uh, 8 meter long in the X direction. And then the next picture shows the walls starting, starting to be printed. And here's a video of Emmanuel, the printmaster, uh, doing the uh, running the machine. Yeah. Um, a cool thing we did was we we printed a big Q on the floor using colored concrete. And here's a video showing the red colored concrete being added on top of the normal concrete. Uh, also, this we put a, a support for the cash counter in there using a basket weave. Uh, print or you can see that here it's it's everybody just loves that, that look it's really it's really cool and then uh, finally there's a, a a queue on the outside wall as well which we put some red dots on to accentuate it what are the advantages of 3d printing construction well i'm glad you asked about that because um, we are able to print the foundation and the walls for around half to two-thirds the cost of conventional construction and much quicker, less than a week. We've also developed a preparatory blend that is based on a, a widely available mix, which is less than half the cost of the mixes being that are designed for 3D construction printing. There is no need for removable forms since the 3D printed material itself is the form. And uh, for foundations, we can do the forms for the footings and the foundation walls at the same time to allow a monopore rather than doing the footings and then infill and then doing the wall on top of them. And at the same time, um, when the walls are being done, uh, rough electrical and rough plumbing can be laid in there, further saving on labor. Um, another benefit is that there is no difference in the cost of straight walls or curved walls. So this allows an enormous freedom of design like curved walls. And as you saw in the farm stand, it has a, a curved, curved walls. Uh, and then the, the final thing is concrete is rodent-proof, rot-proof, provides a quiet environment compared to conventional construction. So to summarize, the cost of the foundations plus interior and exterior walls is around half to two-thirds of conventional. Jobs can be done much faster. Uh, there's a huge freedom of design and super long-lasting and, and quiet. Um, we can also talk about almost zero waste, like... Basically, we waste one and a half bags of concrete. Out, out of 300. <laughs> out of 300. So what else can you do? Well, there are many, many things that can be done. Like you could do barbecues for the backyard. You could do uh, retaining walls. There's infinite things that can be done. But I'll just show you some stuff that we've done. For example, there's tilt-up signage is, is really, really cool. This uh, picture shows an address sign made of, of numbers that were printed horizontally and then tilted up. They're about 30 inches tall, which is uh, 76 centimeters. Also, uh, we printed this uh, heart, which is also 30 inches tall. We printed a, a, an inner and an outer heart, and then we, we later infilled it. And when we did the infill, we put little holes, uh, tubes through, so we can light it up, as you can see the picture showing it at night. Um, another product is staircases we can do you can do custom rise and run and width and the idea is you print the treads on edge and then tilt them down into a uh, poured slab which is still wet and that provides a structural integrity underneath as you can see in the, the sketch and then there's a photo of some that were um, that were done in, uh, by the people that produced our printer and then another thing is fence panels which we haven't quite added yet <laughs> no, it's new. but there's some pictures of some of the designs and the gray things represent posts and the red stuff in the middle represents the 3d printed um, possible designs there's an infinite number of designs yeah, but we're just showing we, you we six. can say like we can go completely crazy with design we can go like bump out we can go like coming in like we can go like spheric we can go and we can mix all those designs together it's really, really amazing in terms of creativity. What about the future? Well, one really exciting thing is the use of greener materials, such as geopolymer or hempcrete. Uh, Portland cement is responsible for something like 7 or 8% of the energy use in the world. And, but materials such as geopolymer and hempcrete reduce that. 
Uh, geopolymer is amazing. It's similar to glass. It uses a fraction of the energy that Portland uses. It lasts thousands of years uh, compared to cement, which lasts 50 to 100 if you're lucky. It's much stronger than concrete, and it can be mass-produced at about the same price, and that's where, where we're hoping to go eventually. Um, there's a uh, 3D concrete printing company in, uh, out of Texas called Icon that recently raised $267 million U.S., and this is proof of the viability of this, this technology. And in Canada, there's very little going on in this, in this area, so there's a huge opportunity here for, for somebody who wants to take this big. Um, we, we know how we want to make the next printer called the producer, which is a high production printer. Um, and it can help, you know, it can print two or three houses a week and help alleviate the housing crisis. Uh, we're open to investment and the right strategic partner to, to participate in taking this technology forward. The ideal would be to partner with a construction company that wants to become Canada's leader in 3D construction printing. How can people contact you? Well, the website is uh, strongprint3d.com, uh, showing on the screen. And uh, the, the, my email address is john at strongprint3d.com, and spelt J-O-N. And Emmanuel's is emmanuel at strongprint3d.com. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good Thanks. day, too.